And I think that after these two first speeches, we are like directly, uh, sp spontaneously arriving to final year at Exander, because I'd like to move from uh, Africa, where we were with Helena, to Center and South of America, and to talk specifically about this so-called green capitalism. Because the point of green capitalism is that basically this is not a real alternative, right? This is just a new phase of capitalism within, just within the same frame of the climate changes. And what's most imp more important right now for our conversation is that one of the possible solutions that has been displayed in order to reduce the fossil fuel dependency has been, for instance, the renewable energies. But um, in one of your um, essay, you called the renewable energies on large scale as fossil fuel 2.0. So as a kind of normal development of fossil fuels. And since you know, renewable energies is actually something we are hoping for, I'd like you maybe to, to tell us a, a little bit more about the infrastructure and how and why did you decide to con coin this new definition, okay? Hello, thank you very much. My lovely speakers next to me said very nice words. I think they did very well to cover the green economy and what that is. Maybe we could just call it capitalism. I think that's kind of where it's at also. It's just got new, it's got good branding and marketing. Thank you over there. Um, before we go, I, I think that if we're gonna talk about the environment, we should recognize fascism's rising. There's other huge issues that are very serious that are intertwined with the environment. Anti-militarism should be back on the table. If we're concerned about the environment, we should be very much concerned about the military, their operations, consumption of resources, seizures of resources, and different things like this, and in addition to the other issues I already said. But, so what was our, so I have worked a fair amount on renewable energy infrastructure in Mexico and now in southern France, and I speak too fast. I'm gonna slow down, and thank you very much for speaking English with me. Um, so, to clarify, once again, I want to stress that I am talking about industrial and utility scale. I'm talking about what is sold to us and how we conceptualize what we think when we hear renewable energy. Because really, when we hear this term, what you're being told is renewable energy, there's no such thing. It just doesn't exist. What you were told is renewable energy is not renewable energy in any way. And like what was already mentioned, I brought the term forward, fossil fuel plus. And the idea with this is that, is to recognize that that's what actually you're being sold renewable energy is. It's fossil fuel plus. Every single aspect of an industrial scale utility or large scale wind turbine is built and based on fossil fuels. It's based on mineral extraction. And we, we can break it down very simply. Whatever minerals you need or oil that you need to build the machines to mine the minerals, to get what you need to make for the metal, the copper, the bauxite, the steel, you need to have machines made to build those. You need to have oil extraction for that. And then you also need to build the crazy factories in Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia and Latin America that are going to build these processing factories. So you, gotta have build, you have to have the factory to build the machines. You've got to have the other factory to process the raw materials. I'll keep it slow. You're going to have to have those machines and whatever crazy technological systems that are now operating it. And I think, I think it's very good that there's not people working in mines that I would never advocate these things. But and then you need the machines to dig and mine these things. Then you need to bring it to that processing facility. And how this is done is a whole other big issue that I'll be probably be getting into more than I ever want to for the next couple of years. But then you need to put it to another manufacturing facility to another one than to get transported as a component to the area where they're gonna set it up, where you also probably had some type of weird land contracting, maybe military police operations to clear whatever land or to secure it. Sometimes it's not always violent, sometimes it's bureaucratic, sometimes people really want these things. But then you go into the ecological degradation that goes on with this, habitat clearing, changing the hydrological tables where you have to put, I don't know, anywhere from 12 to 16 meters of concrete down anywhere from 12 to 24 wide. I don't quite remember the numbers. You can see pamphlets at the back table if you want some more numbers. And I have a hot book that came out last month, but uh, <laughs> I had to be cheesy. But it, uh, 
yeah, so there's that whole issue of how you're actually clearing the land, destroying puma habitat, and all these different types of things. Then on top of that, what's the energy being used for? Wow. It's not going to the people in the local, local villages. It's usually being exported. Mining companies have their own wind parks to kind of green their images and also to power their facilities. In the area I worked in Mexico, Walmart was a, a very big player. So the short answer is, is that what you think is renewable energy it was a very glorious marketing feat that kind of came off the back of environmental movements in the 1970s that's really just fossil fuel plus. But I think, you know, what is renewable energy? Can there be a renewable energy is important. I think we should really think, and like what was already emphasized is, this is about power, this is about energy, this is about resource control. And how are we actually gonna have a real renewable energy? And I think what we should look at with capitalist infrastructure or the growth of the techno-capitalist system is that ultimately things, things are being mined and ripped from the earth and trans turned into a certain type of energy through long supply chains. And then it's hemorrhaged into different railway infrastructures, hemorrhaged into televisions, and, and literally the system is just vomiting energy that's not being put back into the cycles. There's no reciprocity. There's, there's a huge blink and break and how energy is being put back into our habitats, into the different environments, and the way that even waste or resources that is urine, blood, and stool isn't going back into the environment. And now it's poisoned with different pharmaceuticals and things like this. So I would, I would want to advocate that we actually really, we got to take it. There's a lot of issues. There's a lot, and they're, they're linked to the different authoritative structures. They're linked to the police that controlled me at the ferry area in terms of these everyday operations. So. What's renewable energy? How can we make it renewable? And let's dig deeper because right now, as was mentioned, and I like them very much, is that corporate activism and environmental activi activism is merging on an unprecedented level, really through different kind of social engineering and marketing campaigns, <clears throat> especially using social media, that is actually really promoting these ideas of renewable energy. It's highlighting the issue of climate change, not talking about militarism, not talking about the local degradations, but it's really trying to advocate, yeah, we need a solution. And the rhetoric sounds good. I agree with the rhetoric. But unfortunately, what's in place is payment for ecosystem services, crazy new climate infrastructure dependent on pretty much plundering public funds to make new markets out of, so we can be charged to go for walks in the forest and have it called ecotourism or what have you. And not to mention the impacts in other more tropical areas with UN Red Plus and all these things like this. So yes, right now there's a lot of people talking about crisis and the environmental problems, but the so implicit solutions that are on the table with policy that were highlighted are serious no-goes. And that's in addition to that renewable energy and these different conservation programs are what's on the table. So we really need to reconceptualize what is going to be renewable energy. We really need to reconceptualize what are going to be we can't, what policy is offering right now is going to be worse. It's just going to intensify what already exists. And I hope that our conversation today, or at least us speaking, will actually, we can go further and to not kind of, kind of go for these tricks or this pithy marketing and, and kind of take like typical political tactics. And so with this, I leave it with you and thank you. Thank you.